Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. No. <laughs> oh god, no. Hey I guess welcome to Food Truck. My name is Ruka. Today we're going to be doing episode 10 of Disco Elysium. So before we get started, I want to let you guys know that we may be going on a once a week upload on the Let's Play. Uh, just because when I finally do move uh, here in a couple of weeks, my stuff is not going to be there right away. And that's going to prevent me from getting any decent content out at uh at a reasonable time so just to have something on the channel and for you guys to to watch and wait for uh, i'll be probably doing like once a week for i don't know maybe at least a month or two uh that, that's the estimate i got for my stuff getting to the new place so yeah but other than that i want to review what we did last time so last time we had a lot of investigations and a lot of information from both Titus Hardy, as well as Classe. I think that's her name. I, I, I keep pronouncing her name wrong. But Classe, our disco dancer, um, quite a bit of information regarding her and the victim. They were lovers. At least they kept each other company. And now we have our next lead, uh, which is possibly finding out where the shots came from and we have several places uh, to look at however a few of those places we cannot get to yet uh, we have to wait until the next day wednesday before we can cross the canal uh, in the meantime we i think we still have to catch up on titus and see what he has to say about the information we just got and if we have time for the night we also have our apartment person to check up on. So yeah, let's just get down to it and see what they have to say. All right, Titus, I am here. What do you have to say after all that? It's you again. What is it? Yeah. Taking your time to talk to me. Okay, I talked to Klasse. Uh, now I need to talk to Ruby. Why? He leans back and regards you with curiosity, because she's your real leader. I'm going to have to level you. She's the next link in the chain that leads me to Lely's killer. Hmm. I have seen her in a laudanum-induced delirium. The paranormal instinct whispers her name into my ear. He's not going to buy that. Look, I need to pin this on someone and I've decided to pin this on her. Uh, he's not going to need it. He's going to not like that one either. I suspect she killed the victim, that's why nope, not gonna like it. A civil war is brewing and the only way to prevent this is to solve the murder. That means talking to Ruby, possibly. Uh, she is a suspect in another case I'm investigating a drug smuggling. Mm, while possibly yes, I think the w thing that's gonna uh, get his cooperation is maybe two. I'm going to level you. She's the next link in the chain that leads me to Lily's killer. Sounds like you're making her. A suspect in this. Not on my watch, you're not. Uh, no, that's not it. Ruby's one of us. We're not gonna throw her under your moral lantern steamroller. Fuck that shit. And fuck you too, moral fa- he, he throws a glance at Titus as the last syllable leaves a slip. The big guy sighs. Ah, jeez, these guys are just trying to score points, points with Titus. Ruby is missing. If you hide from the police in a murder investigation, you become a suspect. You know how it works, guys. That's nothing. That's just legalese. You don't even have a sound theory. I don't want to be rude, <laughs> but we're trying to get some R&R &R here. Think you could fuck off now? Uh, why, didn't we why didn't we not mention the, the shooting? I think we'll keep sticking around, Titus. You'll be surprised at how quickly a theory presents itself if you keep looking. From the corner of your eye, you see a little bird fly into the bush, hmm. right behind the window, behind Titus's back. Present a solid theory about why Ru Ruby could have done it. I don't think she did, but ooh, 28%? Saw the winch outside, reconstructed murder scene, Ruby is a drug trader established. 28%, my luck hasn't been very good recently, but it is a wide check. So let's give it a shot. Nothing is of happening. Course. The pieces are there, but they remain unconnected. 
No, no, we can do this. Squint your eyes. <laughs> Squint your eyes. Sorry, you're not coming up with anything. Again, the pieces are there. She could have done it. Somehow. Something else. Walla walla bing bang. It's just not coming together. Walla walla bing bang? Why am I such an idiot? Squint your eyes harder. Still nothing. But that's okay. This doesn't have to turn into some kind of meltdown. You're just a cop taking your time to present a theory. All right. Why does Puzzle Face get to not melt down? <laughs> you and I melted down like crazy. Remember? Because Logic is pretty good at keeping his head um, straight. Unlike all the rest of you guys. Holy crap. Right. Puzzle Face shouldn't be the cool guy when he fails. I was supposed to be that. No, you tried to get me killed, Authority. Shush. I'm just more level-headed than you. <laughs> That's my thing. Let's look at this as a learning experience. What are the components you need to implicate Ruby? His wife left him. Mm. He needs to kill himself. Make her sorry she did. What's that got to do with anything? No, no. He needs to say 500 layers and I can't remember the first line. Uh, my wife left me completely alone. No, we don't say that. They don't. They already don't care about that. Five hundred years. I can't remember the first line. I just want to hear the components of the theory. Smart move. The components are access to the roof, weapon, and motive. Here is what you can do to make it easier. Come on, guys. For starters, you could find out what's behind that mystery door in the kitchen. If it's a secret route. She could have used that to get to the roof. Hey, Sabo Fair, that's good thinking. Can't get through the door. You know what would help. Doing a thorough search of this room. Maybe something's hidden. Ooh. There's a spooky building west of this. Take a flashlight with you. Search the basement. There are secrets. Magisterial, ancient secrets that may assist you. You know what? How are we going to do that if we can't, you know, there, we, I think we have to go through the bookstore, right? You could crack Classia's last defenses. Maybe she'll tell you something helpful. Say, 500 leers and I can't remember the first line. No, no, nothing good will come of it. He did the right thing not saying that the last <laughs> time. Just do what the nice helpful guy said and don't do the bad things my gosh logic you're gonna you're keeping me straight here otherwise we could get in trouble like some of you guys did it's that simple uh, unless we have more business we should I'm gonna take off now thank you I'm all right do I have anything that increases logic uh, clothes. Ooh, glasses actually do. Somehow the glasses actually do. Uh, that, that. Yeah, it's just the glasses. But, you know what? Gla uh, our authority is not great to begin with, so it's like, eh, why not? Put on the glasses. This increases my logic. And we look like we look like a cool cop doing it. Let's see. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Squint. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. I wonder what this perception is. Mysterious door scene. Bird flew by. Wing beats. You've been here for a long time. Really, you've been here for ages. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, uh, I mean, let's just check it out. It's 72%, might as well. There's a yellow nice. ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Oh, maybe that's our key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. 
someone's hit a key in this in the bush. Huh? The big guy looks behind him. I need you guys to hand the key to me. Can you let me slide by so I can grab a thing? Titus, can you hand the key to me, please? Uh, can you just let me slide by? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. That tattooed man yawns and settles more comfortably on the bench. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. Okay. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the Hawthorne branch, and slides it across the table to you. Thank you, Theo, the one level-headed guy that almost shot us, but thank you anyway. The key is brass. Workshop spear is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? There's a, there, there was a good reason why I liked Theo. I'm tired of listening to your shit. Thank you. Does anyone know why this key was hanging outside the union box window? Looks like the key in your hand. I wonder what this door, uh, what doors it opens. Thank you. Off yourself. Make it up to me, cop. I still got my money on that. Okay. Does anyone know why this key was hanging outside? Didn't even know it was there. Boys. The man looks at the key in your hand and then around the room. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. Uh, look at the key in your hand. I wonder what this... What doors it opens. It could open the door in the kitchen. The blue door. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there? Possibly. It's worth a try. It's worth a try. You know, I... Mm, I could do that right now, but I need to talk to our... Um, apartment guy first. We're 50 minutes too late. And we can open that door anytime. The, the door opening is like... The door is always going to be there. But apartment guy, we need to make the time to get to him. So let's do that. Ah, oh, jeez. It's... Is this snow? Oh my gosh, it's snowing. We're going to freeze out here. All right, I think this is, yeah, balcony right there. Oh, there he is. You hear distant traffic? Night is falling on the city. A maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. And he's right outside. Of course, I thought about quitting, but for what? John Marie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. His slender figure is backlit by city lights, its distant streets and motorways flashing like diamonds. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Diamond city lights, okay. Uh, we got your hint, found the key right under the stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? Uh, so I'm aiming for, yes. Honestly, I'm just trying not to screw anything up. I'm not going to make things right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Ignore his question. I was hoping I could talk to a possible witness. Your balcony overlooks the murder scene. Uh, I'm hoping to make things spectacular. Beautiful. He says again. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. Oh. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. Uh, I feel like this is a trap. By the way, I'm really digging the view here. Points to the city skyline. Why would, why would I want to meet your friend? Very well, I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. Proceed. Uh, sure. Let's, uh, let's get on its good side first. Nice, nice city skyline. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. Martinez is special, isn't it? He looks away, his cigarette end glowing in the dark. Wait. Suddenly you're digging things? 
The lieutenant whispers to you, uh, shaking his head. Digging? What do you mean, digging? Uh, why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me, you do. Okay, well, I'll talk to him, but first I want to talk to you. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Okay. Downstairs, a cat crosses the yard, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. How to where? Something tells you you're never going to talk to an individual this cool or mysterious ever again. Run where? To the city. It's a beautiful night. He gestures idly towards the, uh, distant motorways. Only if you're promising me that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. We'll talk. Just not tonight. Okay. And Kim, what's the problem? The smoker assures you, brushing his hand through the hair. Through the hair. Take care, all right? All right, well, thank you. Ooh, I wonder how many skill points I got. He says with another uh, disarming smile before slipping into the night. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. He's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? There's something so different about him that I just can't put my fingers on. Uh, let's go, Kim. We have to interview this Sunday friend. There's something different about him. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? He's a good listener. I like talking to him. Uh, there's something so mysterious about the way he talks and moves. He smells good. <laughs> Why on earth does he smell so good? Uh, he's a good listener. I like talking to him. You like talking to him. The lieutenant squints his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. Kim, it's not... Okay, I think I, I think I know what Kim is talking about, but it's not like that. It made me feel special. It made you feel special. Kim, it's not like that. He's barely holding it together. It's all he can do to keep from bursting out in laughter. Come on, detective, let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? He nods at the apartment door before you. All right, well, let's see who the Sunday friend is. Better be worth it. A plain clothes office guy. Business magazine. What else is uh, over here? Photo same apartment dated year 01. Governmental issues take me all over Revishall, you see. Expensive men's perfume. Dragon silk robe. Take it. In front of this guy? Yes. <laughs> yes. None of this is weird. Samarian conical hat. Okay. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. Exquisite canopy bed made of metal. I guess that's the bathroom over there. This is soaked up in a pot. An empty ashtray. Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures at a local university. Okay. Two pieces of equipment. And who are you? Officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. And you don't have your tie in your portrait. Who are you? His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. Oh. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. How are you the Sunday friend? An official? I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Were your credentials, sir? Hanging? What a drag. He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Point at the bed. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. No, we don't. 
Show him the silk robe. Before we get into that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Let's get down to business. Welcome. Let's get started. Of course. Let me just say it has been an emotional week for me. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air comes in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook <laughs> and nods to you to proceed. You actually witnessed a lynching? Wasn't official like you doing Martinez. Can you tell me about your friend? Um... What's an official like you doing, Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. Okay, so you're an assessor? The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay, but what are you doing here in this apartment? So you're some kind of bureaucrat. What is this international community? What is the price stability? Enough business, let's talk about something else. Okay, but what are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. 12 stories minus 4 equals 8, but I only see 3. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. So you're some kind of bureaucrat? Yes. As I said before, I'm a commissioner from Sur La Clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. Okay, he glances at his watch, meaning time's of, of the essence here. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Or maybe there is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the moral intern is joking or not. What is this international community? What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. That doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Okay, that's simpler to understand. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below 2% of what? That is fascinating, but I wanted to ask you something else. But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. Okay, you're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Okay, sure, give me a, give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. Uh, tell me about Sir Leclerc. What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized country that measures very high on the Human Development and Freedom Index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. EPIS, what's EPIS? Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Darling? That can't be an official designation. What makes Rivershaw Sir Lekev's darling? Because a great percentage of Rivershaw's culture hails from Sur La Clé. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir La Clé's love for meatballs <laughs> and mashed potatoes. I'm guessing Perception does not like meatballs and mashed potatoes. Okay, enough business, let's talk about something else. Whatever you wish, officer. Uh, you actually witnessed a lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. The man gives a solemn nod, okay. 
He didn't see the hanging. He saw the little show staged by the Hardys. Let him talk. He may know more than even he knows. Is it because you did it, Mr. Bilderman? No, start from the beginning if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? Lieutenant is already scribbling down notes. It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. Well, spill it out, man. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. But you did. That lines up with previous testimony, doesn't it? Well done, detective. The lieutenant nods to you. Thank you, sir. I think we've got the picture. Anything else stand out? Only that there were about eight or ten. I couldn't make out anything. It was so dark. And it was quiet. Quietest lynching I've ever heard of, <laughs> let alone heard. He says, smoothing his hair. Eight or ten. We counted eight. If it was ten, are we missing two other people? Quietest lynching, though? Yeah. Because it wasn't. But I suspect you knew that already. I can't say I'm surprised. The fine reputation of the men and women serving in the RCM is well deserved. What if I told you there's a fugitive from the more Lintern and Martinez? No, we, we do not want to tell them that. Uh, can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. How did you become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Insula? Oil platforms ablaze in the night? Civil wars lasting for years? Finally, the international community is forced to step in. Uh, what are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. You're describing how the coalition uh, occupied Revishal. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? Uh, the man pats his pockets looking for something. What do you mean? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society for adults. I hear they're oodles of fun. I used to have a flyer for one, but... Don't care for it, to be honest. But now that I start thinking of it, it was for an improv class anyway. It's this funny theater thing, you know? Very creative. <laughs> Helps relieve stress. I don't know. I feel like it would increase stress, at least for me. He moves his fingers. A chill runs down your spine as you envision a half dozen people in professional attire standing around a chair, awkwardly pretending to be waiting for a motor bus. It's neither funny nor creative. Uh, you still haven't told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker in the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Fine, but what's his name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. Okay. Why are you doing... What are you doing in this, his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. What view is dark outside? Listen. He says, raising his hand. A baby is crying in the neighboring apartment. Someone's baby is crying? No, listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom. 
oh. a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. He knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was about asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you've seen him around. He's a busy bee. A busy bee? What an odd choice of words. Okay, I have something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. Uh, I think that's all I, that's all I need. A moment, officer. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Yeah, I'm not gonna put Class A on a wanted list right now, so yeah. Hold on, why can't we talk later? I'm not going anywhere. I just want to take a look around this apartment. I already did. Uh, thanks for the heads up, but my work here is done. Hold on, why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Okay. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I just want to look around in his apartment. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. And he's looking at his watch again. Honestly, I got everything I need. Was there anything else? I don't know about the fugitive thing. I don't really want of to. Course. I don't really want to um, talk about that. But uh, let's go ahead and get out then. I think we're done here. Oh, first snow and now rain. Hold up. Let me get my rain gear. Drama and electrochemistry. How's this look? <laughs> that looks horrible. I'm not gonna take off his shirt. That that uh, that would just look even more awkward. But this is quite the that, that's quite the getup. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Anyway, I'm gonna keep this hat on. No one's um, asking about it. That was totally... That was pointless. What did I get out of that? Nothing. The, on the only thing I got from that was... Yeah, okay. The, the, the lynching was quiet. Got it. Um, nothing else. If he saw anything, he didn't tell us anything about that. Um, yeah. There was nothing. Let me just double check that this... Okay, the key does not go there. Blue door time! And it is... Almost 10.30. So that probably means... It's almost bedtime. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. All right, let's try this uh, spare workshop key. The key fits the dimple lock. Oh, nice. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. The darkness before you smells like engine grease and cut wood. All right. Oh, there's another pinball machine. This pinball says Franco-Nigerian. The theme is horses and swords. This pinball is white Diora. The black, the back glass shows a female figure in mourning. That I note. NB. The spare key is tied to a bush outside the corner of the room window. Okay, so we got a little information about that. Oh, five real. Thank you. I'm gonna need that. Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it. Yeah, uh, maybe not right now. Lit. A phrase almost synonymous with the Insulindian pinball scene. Any pinball scene, really. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. 
Wait, you played it? A little. Let's take a closer look. Ah, it... great. <laughs> the lieutenant sighs. Cornelius Gordy and the mountain goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. How much does it cost? Get the game on, finger boy. Those flippers are ready. Oh, one real? Lean close to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The mask legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Okay, inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with other goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. You know what? We got a little cash. Let's try one. Am I actually going to play it? It or? takes a while to get into a rhythm. <laughs> but pretty soon, you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. I just got an achievement said, Gertie Ball is lit. And Kim is here. It's like, what the heck are you doing? What the heck are you doing, dude? Go, go, finger boy. <laughs> finger boy. I feel sorry for the gods. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Wait, what kind of guy was he then? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. A mask nationalist. A racist mountaineer. An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. I mean, technically the human beings are at the top of the food chain, so... Technically. He also hit his wife and kids. Mm. Other people's kids too. Sometimes pets. Hateful little men. Okay, I see where you're going. But you seem to be having fun. Eh, I'm pretty good at this. Your game is definitely improving. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. Tiny Hammer shatters something inside the machine. Something glass. An ampoule? An ampoule? The words, pale rupture, light up on the speaker panel, and the machine starts filling with a thick, milky fog. Something's happening. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Is this poison? Congratulations. This is where the game ends. It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. Some is actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point, but that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Him, it can be done. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. You will eventually make a mistake and then it's all over. <laughs> Bad at ball games, 3%. Why do they even make this if it's impossible to win? Give up, winning's too stressful. No, let's try it! Now, if you can't even see it. Oh well, it was worth a shot. The last goat plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. There goes nothing. 
finger boy. I mean, even if I wanted, would it would it any would it have changed anything? Probably not. But I want to give it a shot. All these mesmerizing machines, just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the white Dior machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. What's white Dior? Uh, what about we fire one of these bad boys up and play some ball? Hey, uh, what's a white Dior? Some kind of inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. It sounds like you don't enjoy pinball, uh, Kim. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. Uh, what about the other one? The Franco-Nigerian ball. Wanna play that? No. Okay, well, let's move on. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. You know what? The bulb being lit like that, if it was, if it's been on for ages, it would have uh, gone out eventually. They, they don't usually last for like more than six months to a year nonstop. So I'm thinking someone put a light here recently and used this elevator to get to the top. Oh, that's where it went. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. That's the elevator to Classe's uh, balcony. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. 88 from the last century. Uh, look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons, Monter, Le Sand, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. It says last maintenance was in 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. This elevator was last maintained in the future? 88. This elevator was maintained a long time ago. At the end of the last century. Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. <laughs> Maximum five. <laughs> it appears this whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. I wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps, uh, the on, he taps the on, what, he taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Okay, I think there's a little typo there. Close the good doors and go up. Let's go. It's not like we had to roll for that. Oh. What is this? Secret room? Small windows tape shot with black plastic you can't see outside. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. This is Classe's uh, upstairs room, the bedroom. Schematics for pinball machine, futuris futurism themed. Empathy, hand-eye coordination, pinball maker's coat. Let's see, how does this look on us? Oh, I love that. That is great. I should probably uh, remove the the hat, but it does improve our logic, so... Oh, that's good. I don't know what the shadow thing is. It's probably a texture issue. But we're going to keep the hat. We're going to keep the hat for when we talk to Titus downstairs. Hopefully that resets things. Pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up. A long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. It looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point. 
This used to be a pinball workshop. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. It used to be a workshop. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hearties bang away at it. Okay. Shoes? Footprints? You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the yeah. workshop floor. That's gotta be recent. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. He looks at you. This isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work bringing us to this place. See, Kim, you gotta trust me when I have these random thoughts of exploration and just prodding into things. Why you got to be so pessimistic? No, 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 no. Why you gotta doubt me like that? Okay, what does this mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route leading to the roof. The roof from where you can shoot our victim. This is significant. Yeah, it does make the balcony... Um, shot more likely. These prints, officer, could be the prints of our killer. And if not, at least there are a good argument for this ruby doing it. To present to Titus. Let's have a closer look then. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The souls have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. This print doesn't look like the odd-shaped print we found at the hanging, Kim. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. I wouldn't rule out Ruby coming here yet. This isn't an argument against her. People change shoes, you know? But it's not an argument for her, either. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom-made to me. Or some kind of foreign print? Hard to say. Still a boot, though. I wish we could take a picture of it. Get up. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. Let's move on. And now we're walking across it, uh, destroying the crime scene. Tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side. Oh, someone's peeking. You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman <clears throat> writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. I think I can see into Classy's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. It points to the marks nearby on the floor. Yeah, we checked it. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist <laughs> conclusions. What were those people doing in there? No, we know what they were doing in there. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. <laughs> Is that what they call it these days? Okay. Well, open the door and we're going to surprise Class A. This is the inside of the barred door you've seen before. So what's on the other side? Unless we veered off into a folded M dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Class here about this route. See how she reacts? Folded M dimension. A reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly and reads science fiction. It's almost midnight. Let's get this done quickly. Unbar the book. Unbar the door. I love it when things just pay off. And she's not here. Where'd she go? She downstairs? She's not in her bed yet, probably. Um. Hey, class day surprise! Uh, I came from the top. Wanna guess how I got there? Where is she? She's not up here. Guess we'll talk to her again tomorrow. 
How much is downstairs? Whoa, 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 wait, hold up. Nothing on the front page rings a bell. Strange. Okay. Classe down here? No, I don't see her. These guys are gone too. Now it is um, almost midnight. People are going to sleep, but just what is Classe though? Can I help you? God, I saw another thing. Another thing? Great. I love those. Uh, let's not talk. Tell her about the the next phone line. God, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh. Okay, well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He's really, really holding himself <laughs> back here. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay, what is back there? Skeletons and ma mausoleum for the dead, pinball machines, a pinball workshop, nothing, the black gaping maw of end of time. Ah, uh, pinball, pinball machines. Ha, I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here, too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. What, you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. Uh, didn't check. Pinball isn't relevant to the investigation. Didn't check. Pinball is stupid. <laughs> Why, do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game. No, I was just wondering if you found pinball machines there. He appears to be making a calculation in his head. He was wondering about something business-related, about how much money he could make of one. Thinking of turning this place back into a pinball arcade? Uh, if you're thinking of selling those pinball machines, I want a fat cut. See, sweet. I am a disruptor. I feel a capitalist plot coming up. Uh, let's see. Thinking of turning this place back into a pinball arcade? No, but we could diversify the entertainment options, seeing as you've opened the door back there. The machine we have in the corner now is broken. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. <laughs> that one's always causing trouble. You just don't like people singing. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. Uh, there's a peephole in the wall. I wonder if we should tell him about this. What wall? Upstairs in a secret back room, right next to Kazi's bedroom. Found it when I found the pinball machines. I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the whirling does not abide spying on its guests. The color has drained from his face. What a shame to fix such a good peephole. Are you sure you haven't been spying on your guests? Well, he hasn't opened it. Couldn't you keep the hole there? What if some hottie's staying in that room, <laughs> wink? All right, you've been notified. <laughs> Couldn't you keep the hole there? What is some hottie staying in that room? Yeah, that would be like a breach of trust. All right, you've been notified. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Do I want to tell him about Class A nicking the phone line? Kind of, no. It's none of my business to tell him. That should be confidential. Yes. Uh, I think we're done, though. I think we're done. And the people I want to talk to are not around. Classe for one and Titus. So, I think it's time to turn in for the night. It is past midnight now, and uh, these guys need some sleep. So let's get them to sleep. We're done today, Kim. Got nothing else we can do. See you in the morning. Oh, actually, I want to check. I want to check something here. Goodbye, Kim. Yeah, nothing. And I don't think she's up there. Yeah. All right. So Kim really only leaves uh, around this time, I feel like, unless something else prompts happenings. Uh, anything with a mirror? I don't think we have anything to do with a mirror. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. 
Nah. It's barely covered in steam anymore. Nah, we're done with that. Okay, on to bed. The bed is still sleep. cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. But it's yours. You've earned it. Go to sleep. We gotta make at least the five more real tomorrow. The still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. Zoo, 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 zoo. Here we are again, my broken bird. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No, you have to stay always half aware of yourself. Okay, limbic system, you kinda scared me there. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot because of the pain. Of my emotional pain, is that what you're talking about? And there's a lot of it, ever present in your organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. These are my just desserts. I will endure this pain with dignity. No, please. Where is that blessed nothingness, that sweet oblivion? I'm an artist and liver damage is my art. <laughs> no, I think I need medical attention. Oh, yes. They'll check you out, give you some pills, make it all okay. The Wonder Makers. Don't be stupid, Harry. It's not happening. They don't make new kidneys and livers in hospital. All you've got to do is pray to God. God it passes, and stare at the flickering darkness. You're just stuck here, in the half-world. Could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? Just get me out of here, back to the other place. I will. I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Human beings will always betray you. I will. I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Sure you do. They're all so friendly, aren't they? Yeah, especially that Titus Hardy. The friendliest person I've ever met. At least they're interesting. Each one has a process just like yours. Running in the space between their ears. Full of secrets. People are beautiful. Statuesque parodies and tragedies of themselves. A great democracy of creatures. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? <laughs> Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep. Even to yourself. While the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. What's wrong with that? But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. You know what I forgot to do? Is equip some thoughts before bed. I should do that. Ah, wakey wakey. At least you got a good seven and a half hours of sleep. All right, Harry. Oh, it's it only keeps going when we're awake. Oh, that kind of makes sense. I was thinking we could like equip it while we're sleeping, but I guess that's not how it works, huh? 
The little guy gets further further away. Kingdom of Conscience. Uh, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like internalizing both these thoughts. I don't know if... Well, I can only equip so many thoughts, huh? At the very least, Kingdom of Co White Mourning is going to get us a little bit closer to our past, and I kind of want to see where that where that leads, so... Let's internalize that one. And Kingdom of Conscience. Heartache is powerful, but democracy is subtle. Incrementally, you begin to notice the change in the weather. When it snows, flakes are softer when they stick to your forehead. When it rains, the, weather, the rain is warmer. They're also powerful. I guess this makes us a little bit more... Sensitive. That's probably not a bad one. Let's go for it too. Internalize. Alright. And... Logic at 8. Let's see if the Hardy Boys are up. We gotta talk to them. I'm guessing Kim is... Downstairs too. Let me, I, I want to talk to. I want to see if Klasse is here. We're not going to talk to her yet, because we need Kim with us. But I just want to see if she's here. Yep, she's there. Okay. I know it's a little early, but we need to talk to you first before anything else. And possibly the Hardy Boys if they're downstairs. But I think Classe first before with the Hardy Boys. Alright, good morning, Kim. Hey, Hardy Boys! It's you again. What is it? First thing in the morning. Let's get this, uh, let's see if we can get any more information. A sudden Ooh, flash I don't know what my chances were, your but that worked. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its airy blaze. Floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotion, all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure R Ruby didn't off him? So that's what you were squinting at. You were trying to come up with a theory, weren't you? That she did it. Everyone is a suspect until proven otherwise. Yeah, he was cobbling together shit so he could put her away. It's RCM 101. No, it's Investigation 101. Well, let old Titus set your mind at ease then. She didn't do it. She was here all night. Good alibi. You could have just said that. Sunday night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here all that time? Yeah, with us. Drinking near the stage there. She didn't go to the toilet. No. In the whole 45 minute window, she was with you all the time. All right. She took a fucking leak, okay? For one moment. Maybe went out too. She has an operation to run from her lorry. We're not getting into what that operation is again, cop. She did it. She does drugs. Okay, I know. And just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot him. I've been through this. It's not plausible. What if I told you there was a back door? All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on that roof. Okay, you do agree the shot came from the roof, right? A skilled Sambo artist could have climbed the outer wall like a spider. There's a secret route in the kitchen that leads straight to the roof. Have you noticed the winch out back on the outer wall of the whirling? Do you agree that the shot came from the roof? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clausius' window from any of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martinez. Good. Maybe from the coast. But like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots. So no, I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. 
There's a 72% chance the bullet came from the roof. 72%. There's a percentage and all. <laughs> Where'd you get it from? Your guys in the lab? Analyze it on the spot, turns out I can do that. <laughs> yes, big lab. Back in Jamrock. The Jamrock Ballistics Lab. Analyze on the spot, turns out I can do that. No, you can't. I know what you did here on the weekend. People talk. And what they say doesn't sound like a science call. You're a madman. You know, you're probably not wrong. I, I got voices in my head uh, vying for my attention, and uh, sometimes they're not very reliable, except logic. Those numbers were an asshole, man. Yeah, and they don't put hair on the roof either. Okay. It's just mambo jambo. He hasn't got shit. Okay, then what if I told you there's a secret route in the kitchen that leads straight to the roof? Oh. He looks sincerely curious. Through what looks like a abandoned pinball workshop. Hmm. People say there was a pinball arcade here. Sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade. Ah. <laughs> Weird place. <laughs> Went bankrupt. And then it became a hostel? Okay, but how'd you get up? There's no room for a staircase in this building. Or an elevator, for that matter. But there is an elevator. In the back. The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumb waiter, used for moving pinball machines up and down from the workshop. Good one, Kim. From there, a door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down. All under seven minutes. That's quite the theory. We need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. Have at it. I'm on it, boss. Right when the law clears, me and Angus are going up there. It's a dumb way to not an industrial lift. How about I go instead of... Yeah, you know what? That's right. You two go. Uh, Angus is probably going to destroy the lift. Just now. You got something else to back this route up? Or is that it? Uh, there were pinball machines in the workshop still operational. I also found footprints upstairs in the old workshop. Guess what? Remember that key I found? Uh, we have firmly established route. No, 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 no. Uh, I also found footprints upstairs. Footprints. Recent. 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 A uh, week or two. Recent, but they didn't fit with any of your scene now. Don't tell them that. Uh, there were prints there with horizontal lines. Uh, let's see. Recent. A week or two. That close, huh? How fortunate. I'll take a thorough look at those prints myself before I believe that, cop. Good news is, I'm still listening. Okay, footprints. Footprints. Uh, horizontal Recent. Horizontal lines. There were prints there with horizontal lines. Horizontal? I see they taught you well in your RCM school. My old man, a hunter, and a half-blind one at it. Could have said that. Horizontal lines. Good news is... I'm still listening. He knows they had to be recent for those lines to still read. This wasn't a failure. Uh, let's see. Have you noticed the winch out back on the outer wall of the whirling? I've seen the winch. I'm not blind. You saying it's part of the elevator she used to get up there? That's right. That's wall mystery down then. An architectural mystery. Doesn't much concern Ruby does it uh, let's see guess what remember that key i found i don't like guessing Carl. no one does it opens the steel door in the kitchen the one that leads upstairs to the roof this key was right here with you all the time you didn't find it but ruby did that's how she got up there queer jump into conclusions theo you took that key did it look like it was recently put there? No, the ribbon was old. Faded. It had been there for 20 years at least. Could have made a copy. She could have put it back there once she was done. Maybe I was jumping to conclusions. Uh, could have put it back there when she was done. Why? This doesn't make sense. It's damn interesting. But it doesn't fit well, and you know it. Mm. It doesn't fit well, but it fits. Andy knows it. <laughs> have we firmly established Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot? Uh, everything else does not really fit, but let's uh, go. Let's keep going. 
firmly, firmly doesn't go well with could've. There's a route to the roof. Me and the boys need to check it out. That's what we've established. Okay. For all of Titus Hardy's uh, tough act, he is logical. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. But a route does not put that bullet in his head. A gun does that, and Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Hmm. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. Uh, let's see. I've analyzed the bullets that killed him. It was jacketed. There's a small 20% chance that the shot came from beyond the roof. No. Local pawn shop sold my lost gun to a woman. Maybe it was her. Uh, it was jacketed. So... The man shrugs and looks at you. So it had to come from a breech-loading rifle. Military grade. Not even you militia monkeys have those. This goes against your short-range theory. If the murder weapon was military grade, how did Ruby get it? Just because it's rare doesn't mean you can't get it. I'm being upfront with what I know. You're right, I'm never solving this case, it's too complicated. Uh, just because it's rare doesn't mean you can't get it. Calm. That's exactly what it means. That wasn't strong. Mm. All right, let's so let's so go with that. This goes against your short-range theory. If the murder weapon was military grade, how did Ruby get it? I'm just being upfront with what I know. Right, that's mighty forthcoming of you. So let me extend you the same courtesy. She's connected to you. Know what? Organized crime, down in general, probably. He's not being too forthcoming. This is not a surprise. So she may have access to semi-automatics, but that's a long fucking stretch of the imagination. <sighs> She's... Okay. I don't think he likes the first one, but let's go with it. Drugs, could have smuggled guns too. God damn. That's just about your favorite topic, isn't it? Every fucking five seconds. I didn't bring it up since last night. What are you talking about? All I'm saying is from what I saw in her cabin, she'd have no trouble getting a gun. That's it. Trouble. This is Revishaw. Even the Royd heads in the gym had a carbine. No one has trouble getting a gun. I still never saw her carry one. Fair. He must be referenced in some past case of this. He's angry because he knows you're right. What he's saying only confirms your theory. Uh, let's see. I didn't say I'd prove she had, had the murder weapon, just that we need to find her. Pawn shop sold my gun, maybe it was her. Oh, they don't need to know that. All right, Carl. Keep talking. I'll tell you when I've had enough. T, we're not seriously considering it, are we? Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Hey, don't know. That's her business. He almost gets up from his seat. Phase three, motive, the last component. It's not why did she kill him. It's why did she organize the cover up? Maybe it's all part of leadership against a uh, challenge. Wait, maybe it's all part of a leadership challenge against you, Titus. Maybe she killed him because uh, she thought it would curry favor with you. Mm. It's not why. She, it's not why she. Why did she kill him? It's why she organized a cover up. And I suppose you have a theory on that. She could have just been covering up for herself. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging. You went along, but she suggested it. She had like. A fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. Oh. Shanky, you're getting into something right there, little man. With a squinty eye and uh, beady eyes. Really, Shanks? Closio wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan. 
If I'd have been first... No, you wouldn't. Time for a logic demonstration. Eugene, let's assume you killed him. Shanky, let's assume you killed him. I didn't do it, fucker! It wasn't my plan! No, 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 no. You probably did, though. <laughs> it's just a thought experiment. Think, Shanky. You killed him. You got up there, shot him, cut down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your buddies as part of, as part of a lynch mob or alone for committing murder? Fuck you, man. I would never fuck my guys over like that. See? She didn't either. She would never do that. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Oh, so he didn't rule her out completely. Oh. And she skipped town. This is good. Uh, let's see. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A very small nod. And a trickle of tobacco spit on his lip. Yeah, I see it. There's one more thing I've been wondering about. Huh. Ever since you asked me where <laughs> she is. Add it to your list of suspicions, if you want. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm yours. I don't know. I don't know where she went. She just got up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where. However hard I asked. Wanna know why? Why? She was afraid I would tell you. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. Good call. On her part to not tell you, but bad call. Wait, why was it going with this? Anyway. That was smart of her, uh, but now we need to look for her. She knew there's evidence on her, and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior, why fleeing is always incriminatory. Perhaps. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When did she leave? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived. I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came in to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. What was she scared of? I told you. You. As in the RCM? No, you. As in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. No wonder she's afraid I have to declare the ending of the human experiment. I'm sorry. God, why does everything flee at the sight of my shadow? I have no idea why she was scared. I'm just a normal cop with regular thoughts in his head. <laughs> God, why does everything flee at the sight of my shadow? It seems you have that effect, especially on women. Wow, you can see that too. Mm. Yeah, that really hurts coming from you, Titus. That really hurts. Right. That's the second one now who's trying to flee you. You know, when I first saw you limp in here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply. But now I'm not so sure. Uh, what else did Ruby tell you about me? She said you have a funny taste in clothes and that you won't stop. Won't stop? Until you have something on her. She said she's heard of you from Jamrock. That you're a human can opener. That you play suspects against each other. Open them up. Like cans. It looks like we have a history. We're infamous. <laughs> Infamous and maybe a little famous despite our drunken appearance. Fucking hell. Titus, did he just? The tattooed man shakes his head. He did. I Open did. Angus up like a can. Yes, he did. Now, we can whine about it. Whack him. Or we can go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al. How about you? <laughs> Silence. He nods. Uh, is that true, Kim? Am I a can opener? You are insistent. I am very insistent. Anything else? Anything? Yeah, there was something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus. This cop, he. But she was too scared. Wow, what did I do? Do you have any clues where she went? She's not far. We know that much. 
She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. So she's probably across the, the bridge then. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Elle. And we won't either. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? The man stares into his beer. She's not, Glenn. Have you looked for her? A little. On the coast. Okay. Where have you looked for her, more precisely? More precisely? On the coast. Past the water log. She's not here. So, I'm thinking she's there. That's what I'm thinking, too. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure. There's some shit houses there. A center block town. The fisher folk there refuse to unionize. So, that's one place we haven't looked. Gotcha. So that's my territory. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. <laughs> we will start there. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a Lowry man. So she changed her hair again. I gotcha. Uh, do you know what she's doing with Uland frequencies? The what now? I have no idea. Boys? She said she's building a, a pale emitter. Wait, Angus, you know something about this? A pale emitter? What's the pale? I gotta ask Joyce about this. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Yulon frequencies at a hail something. I don't know more. This guy barely understands what he's talking about. That's still something. That's still something, though. That's good. That's good, Angus. There you have it. Hail something. Uh, okay. It's not much, but it'll do. Thank you. It'll have to. Uh, shake it. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. Wow, Titus, I have more respect for you now. Uh, let's see, let's talk to this guy, see if he knows anything. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Eh, leave. He probably doesn't know anything. Uh, let's talk to Class A really quick, and let's use the shortcut to see if that does anything. I hope the footprints don't get messed up by me going over them. That would be bad. It looks like it's still there. Not like I can easily avoid it anyway. Alright, Class A before we leave this joint and go to the other side of the river. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions <laughs> pertaining to a murder investigation. In God's name, wake up, look her in the eye. They're both locked, why? Uh, a couple more questions about the disease, about your room. Yeah? That door there, did you know it leads to a downstairs elevator? I did not. Do you think this has something to do with what happened? I do. It's possible. She keeps looking at the door with a worried expression. The wind ruffles her hair. There's a peephole on the other side looking into your bedroom. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yeah. Yes, looking into your bedroom, miss. The lieutenant points to her window. The unmade bed is visible through the glass. Okay. There's a pause as she processes this information. A jitter of fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? Could be a coincidence. It could be connected. We don't know at this point. Could be connected. Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. If it is recent, who do you think made it? Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. She does. She must have some idea. 
I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Uh, you must have some idea who might have been interested in making that hole. Honestly, I have no clue. Yet, maybe it's something she's keeping for a later move, when she's more sure of herself. There were tracks on the floor, they're recent. Huh, this isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. It's an old pinball workshop, the room back there. This place used to be a pinball arcade. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Okay, that's all for now. Mm-hmm. Um... Other questions? A few more comments about what's behind the door. Nope. All right. Wait, why can I not see my percentages? Why can I see my percentages? Who? Oh. What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. I don't. Why could I not see my chances? She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Kim, why have you not arrested her yet? You know, I think you didn't make that call at the station. Uh, let's change the subject for the time being. I don't know where this is going, to be honest. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath. As if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. Huh. Let's get back to the lies you told. Return this to later. You know, I, I don't know where drama was going with that. I don't have any reason to bring all that up just yet. We gotta find Ruby first though, and then uh, maybe we can implicate her on some things. But, okay. Let's uh, check something here. The radio. A radio microphone. Oh. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Any more information? Yes. It took some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Sure. The lieutenant leans in to listen. Notebook in hand. Shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Cortenaer. That's E L L I S. K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-R. Exact date of birth, unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February, 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. This is what huh. the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Brand Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Crenel, or any of its other incarnations, or him even entering Ravashon. Wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had, the only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. Thank you. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. Uh, uh, so all we have to connect him is a Cornell, to Cornell is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double check their inventory. Thank you, Alice. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. Well, we have his name and service record now. The name? This is very good. Elise Cortenard. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? No, that's it for now, thank you. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a se- All right. That's good. That's good. 
Uh, let's see. Empathy and knife locks blues. What does that mean? Halogen watermarks. Work it. God ass. <laughs> Hindsighted. Super logical for a cop to wear this. Insensitive bachelor party vibes. Feeling twitchy bum brain. Eye of the Reckoner, a bit dirty. Eye Captain. What is this? These descriptions weren't here before. A real statement to wear, unsavory odor. Cigarette stained fingertips. Balancing the books, filthy hobo, probably a uh, narcomaniac. Become the dragon, become an addict, in a strange bathing robe. <laughs> Interesting. Vivid imagination, unfiltered uh, contact. Heels ridiculously high. Anyway, let's go across the, the river. Maybe we can do something now. Sirs? Can we talk to you? Morning. Rusting control panel with loose. You grab the hand ah, there we and go. pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. The water lock starts moving. Nice. So we can finally cross, right? Right, we can go to the coast now. Expect rugged terrain and drugs. Gotcha. Oh, okay, so that this is where we cross from. Wait, I saw nothing. What's going on here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's money up there. Breaker box uh, to power radio pylons above you. Maybe there's something inside. Cash money. This one, too. Cash money. I see like there might be some thoughts around me, but nothing's coming up. Okay, so we made back the one real we spent on the pinball machine. this break. Ah, pills. This thing. Alright, time for some physical implementation. Oh, glasses. What do they do? Feel the streets, empathy, uh, and logic. Okay. Minus one logic. There's got to be something here. Okay. Why can't I save? Maybe on the next um, auto save, I can stop and see what's going on. Is this my car? Banged up fuel canister. Oh, I can sell this. Dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel oil. A logo on its sign has been partially stripped over years of use. Government issued red dyed fuel oil inside looks like paint. Though it smells much, much worse. I think this one's mine. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? <laughs> this is where they were leading. Uh, this is where the tracks in the plaza were leading to. It appears to be so. 
the lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the uh, wreckage. Let's investigate. I agree. We should definitely investigate. I think this might be mine. The lieutenant re uh, replies, his eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. You get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. Run your hand over the cold metal. Is... What is this make? What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? How long has it been here? Hey, well, well, well. Looks like Jacob... Eru's journey came to an abrupt end here. What should we do? Uh, let's run our hand over. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched it. What's the make of this MC? The logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. A monkfish? How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. That was me! The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Well, it looks like the journey came end. Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the waves. Did you say something, Lieutenant? I did not. Okay. But I'd... Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the waves. Uh, yet another case of the engine displacement, triumphing over the driver's IQ. Crazy recklessness. Yes, yes. Crazy recklessness. I'd say it has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. That's definitely mine, isn't it? What should we do? Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The Joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket. A Joyrider jacket. How long will it take for the low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Okay, sit on the swing and wait for the tide to recede. Oh, wasting one to two hours, really? As you sit down in the old, rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. Well, I guess I had no other choice, so... The hinges creak under your weight. Dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. This really bothers me. I can't see what my chances are. Why? Why can I not see my chances? Uh... Whistle a tune. Point to the sunken vehicle. Whistle a tune. Spit flies from your mouth to your mustache, your chest, the ground before you. No sound, though. A 1-1 one, one roll, too. The lieutenant must think it's rather funny. He smiles and quickly turns away. Eh, yeah, sir. I would like to see you try in this bloody wind. With his lips puckered, the lieutenant lets out a beautiful, melodic trill that puts even the insulindic thrush to shame. You hear the sound echo on the large body of water. Clouds race across the spring sky, and suddenly you just feel better about everything okay okay that's way better than what you did <laughs> the clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece 30 minutes have passed looks like this might take a while time to present a good topic for discussion so was your dad also you know uh up not sure it's taking a sweet time would you rather stay on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Huh. Tide is sure, t sure taking a sweet time. Uh. Was your dad also, you know, a cop? My dad and mom are both half sailite. Uh, so both. I don't know who my mom or my dad was. I miss my parents. So both what? Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. 30 minutes pass. All I'm saying is I'm surprised people's skin color varies so drastically. I don't know. 
if you have to side with either strikers or shipping company, who would you, who would you choose? Do you think I'll refine my gun? <laughs> it's taking a while. Uh, yeah, who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization and therefore do not have to choose between a rock and a hard place. But if someone puts a gun to your head, I guess that's just your way of saying you'd side with the company. I understand you're going to be siding with the Union, but what if you had to put your, someone puts a gun to your head? Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. There it goes. 30 more minutes pass. Can you make out the mark now? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Coupri, Model 40. Yes. Why haven't you? Why did we spend time on the swing then? It is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices, uh, firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Squint your eyes and say, is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? That's mine. It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about the driver of this vehicle? 41 is his rank in the underground street raising hierarchy. Small fish, this one. Must be Tommy 41, the morning host of FM 41. Looks like the factory made a mistake and actually called this one Capri 41. Stupid factory. I hate guessing. District something or precinct, something municipal. Uh, rub your temple, you're getting a horrible headache. Oh god, no. <laughs> oh god, no. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. Uh, I did that when I was drunk, didn't I? Oh god, Harry. Oh god, Harry. What did you do? What didn't I do at this point? No. Just nope. Say no to this, Harry. Oh my god, it's mine. I drove the car into the sea? No, no, no. Yes, your car is in the sea. Face it, so we can start dealing with this. Oh my god, it's mine. I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Uh, maybe I was in pursuit of someone, so how do we get it out? I can still fix it. No, we cannot. Uh... They're not going to take me back for after this, are they? The badge, the gun, and now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than machines. Training a police officer is even more costly. Trying to cheer you up, okay. People, yes, but not you. So, it's in bad shape. We can't get it out. Well, at least I can see what's in there now. Yes. Let's go take a look. First things first, what are my thoughts? Kingdom of Conscience. The Kingdom of Conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately, and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on Earth. What is this graphic? I can't quite tell what this graphic is about. I just see uh, some guy and it looks like an animal, a wood animal. More of this dialogue options heal plus one morale. Learning Cafe Volition race to five, logic race to five. Okay, doesn't really help me much of anything to be honest. This one's going to be done in five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna pick some stuff here first. A bottle drained of all, of all of its booze is frozen into the ice. Cash money. I'm guessing this used to be my money. Do I have a wallet in there? That'd be nice. 
There's my badge! RCM badge. And a coat. That's where it was all this time. United in black, visual calculus, sharp eye. Well, it looks kind of weird on him, I'll be perfectly honest. I like this coat better. Though, um... Shivers versus visual calculus. I'll take the visual calculus. My badge! Wow! He looked much better before. <laughs> what the heck? A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge. At least something good came out of all these. Study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Rivershall West. You see a photo, a name, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and, in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. And so am I. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. How old? Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture <laughs> is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. <laughs> and he's winking, why? What do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now. It looks better on him because he isn't in as much pain while producing it as you are now. Although there's already a hint of that pain, certainly. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Uh, Harrier Du Bois. Harrier? That's long for Harry. So you are Harry. Everhart was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him your Harry Dubois didn't. Uh, what kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times. Like Undying or Boxer or Ironhide. A name like Armour. But I don't want to be Harrier Dubois. Ah, Harrier Dubois it is then. At least to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it. Catching light. You see lines of information. Rank. Lieutenant uh, 2JFR. What is 2JFR? Lieutenant W. Freighter. Your freighter. What is a Lieutenant W. Freighter? The Lieutenant is a rank above Sergeant and below Captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a Lieutenant. And a W. Freighter. The title of Y. Freighter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double freighter. Declined, huh? There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precincts <laughs> décomptage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. What's a decomp... Partage. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. Uh, so you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior? So you've been putting up with me because of, uh, we're the same rank? Uh, thank you for explaining this. So you've been putting up with me because you're... Uh, I'm your superior? No, 
I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. Well, thank you, Kim. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. And now we've even found your badge. He smiles encouragingly. Good. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. <laughs> I thought my rank was drunk. Yes, uh, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past, and this leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. Thanks, that gives me hope. I'm afraid there are no ex-alcoholics. Um, I don't want to be... I, I don't want to get better, I want to get worse. So that gives me hope. Good. Turn back to the document. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads... Let's see, Rev 12-2605, I'm guessing Jamrock 41. I wonder what these other ones are. That's just the serial number. Rev Achol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Okay, so it means nothing. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose. One that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. Date of issue, 7th November 50. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. The case created a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. Precinct 41, yes. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct. 41, like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt. The 41st is... He stops. What? It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. I think we've heard of Price. Roberts, Feuerbach. Dimitri, suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it, and a shining watermark. Let's put that away. Okay. Looks like we have quite a list uh, that still need to be done. And... Date of birth generator. You were born in the year 07. In the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go, and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. Good. Uh, bonuses. Learning cap raised to four, minus one difficulty to office zinc passes. Huh. Not bad. Logic raised to four. I think we have, um, yeah, this one's better as far as that's concerned. We could forget this, but I think it takes a point to forget. Minus one difficulty to all physique passives. Which is what exactly? Ah, endurance, pain threshold, physical instrumentation, all this other stuff. I don't know. We haven't had to like really use that, so I'm kind of curious whether that's if that's usable. Anyway. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what's going on in my game here. I think um, there's some bug. I can't see tooltips anymore. I also can't see... I can't save. Uh, so I'm gonna try to have to figure this out. I'm, I'm gonna st stop here before I get too far. And if I have to do all this stuff again before getting to this point, then I will. I'll try to make the same decisions as before. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point though for today, and the next time we do this, hopefully we'll find Ruby, and... Or, we, we, well, the way it's going, we're not going to find her right away. We're probably going to have to investigate a little bit, and then find Ruby. 
but yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll we'll get it done. We'll definitely get that done. But yeah, anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the the playthrough so far. I'm really liking. Uh, <laughs> I'm really liking uh, what do you call this? Hardy's more intellectual side and not the the gruffness that he's been displaying all this time. But anyway. Thank you again for coming. Have a nice rest of your day, everyone. See ya.